engaging the class is the holy grail for teachers and uh, anything, any technology that enables me to do that, I'm going to welcome. Uh, as a newly qualified teacher, I would spend hours and hours on my lesson prep and I, my worry was not about my ability or my knowledge of my subject, it was, was it interesting enough? Was it engaging enough? Were they all taking part? Was I able to give them activities that they could reinforce their learning? And would I be able to do that without spending eight hours every Sunday trying to put that together? Okay, so one of the key things obviously is value for money. Um, it's a big investment. They last probably spent money in the classrooms for, it, for front of classroom solutions a good 15 years ago with uh, interactive whiteboards, but the technology has moved on quite a bit since then. CleverShare is a feature of the Android and you can connect tablets, but you can also connect uh, uh, laptops as well if you wanted to. So you can use it in your uh, ICT suite and you can have all the children's laptops connected up to the screen so they can join as well. The CleverTouch screen also comes with its very own app store. No adverts, no pop-ups, no in-app purchases, essentially no surprises for the teacher in the classroom. So they're all curated and ready to download. The software that comes with CleverTouch that enables me to do all of this is Lynx. It's Snowflake, it's Lessons Online, it's the Android Lux, it's the sporting apps, it's the Clever Store. It all helps me to put together that critical, really engaging lesson. And the key thing about CleverTouch is that it's not subscription based. So this is going to be good news for my SLT because the updates come in for free. Uh, the software is agile developed, so it's, it's end user led. And the features that you're going to see in Lynx are all as a result of feedback from teachers. And it's compliant with legacy resources. So all those hundreds of notebook files or flip chart files or PowerPoint files, uh, a teacher can use in the Lynx software and take advantage of all the easy features. Value for many. It, clever touch screens are feature rich. Legacy resources, all those resources, teachers can open their old resources and move on with the new technology. The infrastructure, the screens come with uh, a mobile device management so schools can manage the estate of screens. It comes with clever message which is a signage and it comes with user profiles so I can have more than one teacher using a screen at a time. It's adaptable. So it's cross-platform, it has dual function. So as a teacher I could have a task on there in the Android and I could be taking Sims Register or working with a small group on my Windows PC in the classroom. Keeping up, you get free firmware and software updates so you're always going to have the latest tech on your wall, it's not suddenly going to become obsolete. The key one here is staff. Staff are the most important resource in the school and so they need to feel confident in walking up and using these screens because the whole reason that schools invest in this technology is not to have the latest tech in the classroom but it is to improve teaching and learning outcomes. The screens are made really easy to use, they're easy to use as a smartphone and we offer training from, with product specialists like myself to support teachers in adopting this new technology. So for any more help, tips, advice and to book training on any aspect of the CleverTouch screen visit us at the CleverTouch Academy website. I'm going to give you a quick overview of notes. So I'm going to go to the menu, click note at the top. A note is effectively a digital whiteboard. I've got some tools down the bottom. I can select a pen, change the thickness of that pen, select from this lovely rainbow, or just use the pre-select. And then I can just write on the board uh, how I would do with a board whiteboard. It is also multi-touch. And again, we can just erase with our hands if we need to at that point. What you've also got with Note is if we use our pen that comes with a board, we can then select two different colors based on the size of the nibs of the pen. And again, I can write one way, turn the pen over, and then use the other color for whatever I needed to do. What we've also got on here, you do have an eraser and we could uh, select things to delete. You may not want to wave at the screen, all the time and then we've got some shape options here as well so whether it be 2D or 3D shapes 
then we can just draw on the board as we need to. You've got undo and redo if you need to, and you've got what we call an infinite whiteboard. So the whiteboard can be as big as you want it to be. If I double tap on that, we can now see our whiteboard that we've created at that point. You don't have to use that option. You could simply select the arrow, shrink the content down, and then move it around for whatever it is you need to do. The other mode you can do, I click on the plus here, I'm just gonna write number two on there. And then what we've got is effectively a flip chart mode. So you can have additional pages at that point. I'm gonna select one more page. I'm gonna go over to the main tools here. This is our main menu. The board is effectively an Android tablet, so I've got new open save to the internal hard drive. I've got a background option here where I can select a different color and or some background images as a guide to support that process. So if I just take it back to white, click OK, and now I've got a background that I can write on the screen, etc. Not sure what the answer of that is. Four. Back to the menu, and again, we can change that, we can leave it, we can go to the previous pages, and that background will be set to that particular page. If I want to add an image to the screen, go to my menu, click Import, and then I can use the board's internal storage, or well, I've got my USB plugged in at this point, then I can just select, find the folder that I want, select the picture, and put it on the screen. I'll do that again, menu, import, my USB, pictures, and I'll select something else to go on there as well. So, and again, we can enlarge and shrink just with two finger gestures at that point. And lastly, we've got an infinite whiteboard, so we can move all this content around and make the space bigger, and we can shrink it down if we need to. Also in our options here, if you've got Google or Microsoft OneDrive accounts, you can connect those up and bring content in from those uh, cloud drives as well. Once you've finished with your whiteboarding, you have an export option if you want to, so you can export it to as, as an image, PDF, SVG or an interactive whiteboard file. You could just click save, come back to it the next day and continue if that's what you want to do. The other option you do have is the QR code that will pop up, so if you've got students with mobile devices, they can scan the QR code and it will then send that content to their device. It's a way of saving paper, you don't have to print all your lesson notes, etc. So I'm going to leave note open and I'm going to come back to it. We've got this little floating menu, I'm just going to click the home icon at this point. Right, I'm gonna to go to menu, browser. So it is a tablet, so we can use the browser on here and go to our websites that we like to use. And again, just to point out that you do have annotation tools that we can use over the top. So we can write on it. We can use the highlighter if we need to. We have color options for that. So if you do wanna point out something different, etc. And again, we can save these notes if we need to. Alternatively, we can take a snippet of that from here, click on the easel, and put it on our digital whiteboard. Back to my menu, click Home. I'm going to show you how to open up existing files that you may have on a USB or cloud drive. Go onto the menu, click files. As you can see, I've got my USB, my internal storage, and my cloud if I had one connected. I'm going to go to my USB. If I click on docs, it will filter out all the Office file formats on there, and then I can just double tap on the file that I want. It'll open up, and then I can click play and then go through my pre-made presentation that I've already got prepared. 
I'm going to select home again and go back to our main menu. I'm just going to go back to files. I can filter my note, which is my digital whiteboard, pictures and videos. So again, double tap on the video. It would give me an option of which video players to use. I'm just going to use the middle one. It doesn't matter which one it is. And now I've got my video playing. What we have here in the sliding menu on the side, so if I select the pen, it will freeze whatever's on the screen and it will allow me to write over the top of the video content. I've got some color options so I can change the color of that pen. And again, I've got highlighter if I want to, and I've got some color options there. And then I have a range of saving options as discussed before. Again, a QR code reader or save direct to the cloud. I'm just gonna click the X. I'm gonna go back to my little menu here and I'm gonna wait for a convenient moment on the video. I'm gonna select my scissors and then I'm gonna effectively take a snippet. It's gonna pause my video. I'm gonna change the size and I'm gonna use the easel function there take a snippet and put it straight onto my digital whiteboard note so that I can have a discussion with the children about it. So at this point I can slip my pen, make some useful notes, etc. I'm now going to show you Cleverstore. Back to the menu, click this Cleverstore icon. And this is our own app store that we've named Clever Store. And the idea with this app store is that teachers recommend apps that they would like to use. We speak to developers, we cleanse it of profanity, you know, adverts, etc. There's no payment to it, it's all free. We could simply just click on the magnifying glass, select a particular topic, age, whether it supports another language, click done and then it will filter all those apps related to that particular topic. And it's like any app store at this point, click on the app and we'll get some content of what it's about. A little description, some images, and it's a free download.